Michael Berry, Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, and Bill Edmund, what do they have in common? Well, all of them think that there'll be a market crash that's coming. And honestly, I am quite worried. So why do they think so and what can I do about it? Oh yeah, thank you very much for those of you who hit the like button and help us to boost up our algorithm to share this video with more people. Thank you very much. This is a cute panda bear for you. In 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic took the world by surprise. Many economies, including Malaysia, went on a lockdown. Businesses were forced to shut down and many people lost their income. With unemployment rate rising and job security at risk, many are not willing to spend due to the fear of financial security. From an economic perspective, this is not good. Because economic growth is driven by spending. If spending reduces, economic growth is reduced. So to boost the economy, the central bank responded by reducing the OPR. Government implemented stimulus plan by giving cash handouts. The whole exercise is to give people extra money so they can keep spending and sustain the economy. And usually this would work brilliantly, but this time it's different. Malls, shops, restaurants, and even casinos are all closed. There's not many options for people to spend this extra cash at hand. So people spend this money on investing. Suddenly, everyone is investing. Your friend who didn't care about investing is suddenly into investing. Aunties and uncles are all discussing what's the next glove stock to buy and which is the next Bitcoin. Whether it's the stock market, cryptocurrency or commodity, everything seems to be shooting up the roof. With the combination of low interest rate environment and stimulus money, many are willing to take on risky investment for quick profit. They buy listening to rumors. Whichever investment is hot, they jump on board thinking that they can make some quick money out of it. This overvalued market is extremely fragile and any negative event can lead to a market crash. An overvalued market is not the only problem. There's another problem that comes together and the combination of this can bring an economy to its knees. That is inflation. <gasps> Since the pandemic lockdown, commodities like crude palm oil and lumber have been in short supply. To make matters worse, there are opportunistic traders who speculate on the prices of commodity. Even though they don't need the commodity, they will buy it up in hope to make profit by selling it at a higher price when real demand kicks in, leading to further inflation. Here's an example to help you understand what I mean. A friend of mine had a quote from his contractor for a house renovation in December 2020. They quoted him 280000 Then in March, March 2021, when he reached out to the same contractor, they had increased the price to 400,000. Reason? Prices for raw material are increasing. His renovation costs doubled in just four months. Consumer goods companies such as Coca-Cola are raising their prices to offset the higher production costs as well. This means basic consumer goods like food will be more expensive and household expenses will be higher. No! God, please, no! 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 People will have less disposable income and spending will reduce. When people stop spending, business can't sell their products. This means less corporate earnings and finally, this will lead to retrenchment and unemployment. This will become a vicious cycle that leads to hyperinflation. The combination of an overvalued market and high inflation will lead to an inevitable market crash. But there has to be something that our government can do to prevent this, right? Yes, there is. They know what has to be done, but they cannot do it. The central bank can control inflation by increasing interest rates. This will curb speculation and help keep inflation in check. However, hiking up the interest rate will lead to tightening of money supply, pulling out liquidity from the financial market and potentially leading to a market crash. On the other hand, if they don't do anything about it, inflation will continue and eventually lead to hyperinflation. And we know what hyperinflation can do to a country. It's a tough decision to make. Either way, there are consequences. And this is what Michael Burry and Warren Buffett have been warning us about. It makes sense. Anyway, before we lose hope and be depressed about the situation, I believe there are things that we can do as individual investors. The first thing I'm doing is to reduce my risk appetite for higher risk investment. I have started to increase my cash position in my investment portfolio. In case there's a correction or crash, I will have money to pick up some great investments. 
Secondly, I've started to increase my position in inflation-proof assets. Assets such as gold, which have been proven to be inflation-proof over the years. You can also consider stocks of consumer goods and services that provide good dividend income. Because whether inflation or not, people are still going to eat, right? And even if the market crash, you still have cash flow coming in from dividends. Although these kind of assets and company are not as shiny or eye-catching as fast growth tech stocks or cryptocurrency, but they are backed by assets and they are defensive in nature. Yes, I could be wrong and miss out on some huge growth, but let us not forget that the first rule of investing is don't lose money. That is the secret of successful investment. On the other hand, greed is the perfect recipe for losing money. So it's okay to earn less. More importantly, we need the economy to reopen to get business going on, which means we need to contain the pandemic. That is our first priority. Some of us are blaming the government for the inability to contain the spread of COVID. Hashtag Kerajaan Gagal. But is that so? Whatever it is, there's one thing that we must do to help ourselves and the economy. Follow the SOP and register for vaccination. Play our role. If we do it together, we can prevent the spread. The faster we can control the spread, the faster we can open up the economy. I alone or you alone can't prevent the spread, but together we can. If you think that this is just about COVID-19 spreading and people dying, you are wrong. We are trying to survive an economic crisis. This is about feeding our family, our kids. This is about the future of our children. That's what this is about. Because your business and your job will be threatened if this pandemic is not under control. So let us do it together to save our families. Stay safe and help others to stay safe. Kita jaga kita.